Hello and welcome to this episode of the Industrial Engineering Notebook. Today's topic is probability rules. I've already done an episode on random variables and there I kind of discussed the difference between outcomes and events, so definitely go check that out. In this episode, I'll just be working with events and we'll look at how the probabilities of those can interact with each other. We're gonna do some unions, that looks like this. We're gonna do some intersections, which looks like this. And last but not least, we are going to do a whole bunch of little Venn diagrams here, which might you might not expect that, but this is really how you learn how to deal with events and their probabilities. Let's get started. First things first, we're gonna do probability of A, and A is just some event. So the probability that A happens, and we'll look at a Venn diagram that looks something like this. We've got one circle here, and that is event A. And one circle here, which we're gonna call event B. And so they kind of overlap. There are some times where event A happens and event B happens, and that falls in the middle there. But right now we just wanna know the probability of event A, which includes all of these situations. The probability of event B looks pretty similar. You just fill in the other circle, and again, it includes the times where B and A happen together. So probability of event B, pretty simple to start out. Now we're gonna get fancy. We're gonna do probability of A intersection B. And we haven't defined intersection and union yet, but you're about to see what it is. So we have our Venn diagram with A and B here. Intersection is just where these guys intersect. So when event A happens, and event B happens when they're both together. So it's just that middle part there. And a union is different. I remember the difference between these symbols because union kind of looks like a U. Probability of A union B, and we'll draw our Venn diagram down here. You might be tempted to say, okay, this is pretty simple. This is just gonna be the probability of A plus, oops, there it is. Probability of A plus the probability of B Bam, done, I know unions. No, you don't. So here's what would happen. If you do probability of A, you highlight all that stuff, and you might see where this is going, and then you do, you add the probability of B, so then you add all of event B here, and what happens? Well, you count the intersection twice. Don't wanna do that, because then you're gonna end up with a probability greater than one, and that doesn't make sense. So what we need to do is we, you know, the intersection happens twice, so we'll just subtract out one of them, minus the probability of A intersect B. Great, so now we understand intersections and unions. Moving on. Now we have to define an important term that gets used a lot, but sometimes I get the impression that not a lot of people understand it. Mutually exclusive. So if two events are mutually exclusive, here's what their Venn diagram looks like. Like that, they don't intersect at all. There is no situation where A and B happen at the same time, they are mutually exclusive. Note, this is not the same as independence. It can be really easy to get mutually exclusive and independent mixed up. Independence is 4th of July, it's fun, it's happy times. Mutually exclusive is sad. You have the event A all by itself over here and event B all by itself over there. So mutually exclusive, not the same as independence. It means that events A and B do not happen together. Never at the same time do events A and B happen. Time for some conditional probability. To express a conditional probability, what we're doing is using this line here. And the way that you read this is the probability of A given B. So that, that vertical line just means given. So given that event B happens, what's the probability of A? So that's easier to understand on a Venn diagram, so I'll draw that out here. Again, given that B happens, so we know event B is in, what is the probability of A? So we're in here, and then we wanna know the probability of A, and I'm only highlighting the intersection part because these, this isn't gonna happen over here because that doesn't also include B. It needs to, given that B happens, so none of these, all of these out here are gonna be excluded. So really what we need to do here is divide the intersection part by all of B together. So let me write that out with math now. The probability of A given B equals the probability of A intersection B 
divided by the probability of B. So it's this middle part divided by all of B. So given that B happens, what is the probability of A? We can express it with this formula here. Another common way to write this is to just put probability of A intersection B all by itself and say that that equals the probability of A given B times the probability of B. And that's just a simple algebra, rearrange it. But a lot of times you'll see it arranged like that, just so you're aware. Now we could talk about independence. Something is independent, so if we have like probability A given B, it would be independent if that just equals the probability of A. So given that B happens, it's still just the probability of A. That means it didn't actually matter that B happened. Probability of A given B equals just the probability of A. And recall what we said earlier. Probability of A intersection B equals the probability of B times the probability of A given B. Remember that from just a second ago? Here. There. There it is. We just talked about it. Okay. Back to the other slide. Same thing here. But what do we know? If A and B are independent events, then the probability of A given B is just the probability of A. So we can actually write it as this. The probability of A intersection B, the probability that A and B happen together, is equal to the probability of B times the probability of A. So you just multiply them. But again, they have to be independent. So we know this intuitively, like if you're flipping a coin, right, and you do, you want to know the, what's the probability that you get heads and on your second, on your second flip that you get tails or something like that. And so you would say, well, it's 50% odds for the first flip times 50% odds for the second flip. So that heads tails combination would be one half times one half, which is just one fourth or 25%. And that is true if both of those events are independent. If your first flip is independent from your second flip. I can't really imagine how they would ever be dependent on each other, but that's just something that kind of gets lost in the mix when we have an intuitive kind of probability situation there. And we forget that actually we need to make sure that those two events are independent from each other first before we can apply this rule. Found this video helpful? Definitely like it. If you want to see more of it, let me know by subscribing to the channel. Subscribe. And if you have questions, throw them in the comments and I will do my best to help you out.